Got one of my all time favorite panfish flies to tie up for you this week. This is called the Predator. It actually started out as a subsurface pattern that Skip Morris tied a long, long time ago for a book called uh, Tying Foam Flies. And it's a great pattern. But a gentleman by the name of Chris Helms made this variation of it, which is much more of a topwater fly. Um, and I uh, saw this a number of years ago. He came out with a DVD on pan panfish flies that work. Anyway, this is his variation and it has become one of my go-to topwater panfish flies. It's just a lot of fun. You don't even have to really put any action on this. Cast it out on the water and let the current just, just uh, move it along and the panfish just love it. Caught a lot of largemouth on this fly as well as smallmouth bass. Um, and I'll even tie it sometimes in a, another a bigger size for uh, specifically for smallmouth if uh, or even largemouth if I uh, am looking to catch them with just this fly. So anyway, that is Chris Helm's variation of the predator, uh, the panfish predator, if, if that um, suits it a little bit better. Uh, and we'll go ahead and get started tying. We're going to start the predator fly by placing our hook in the vise. This is a Mustad 9672 in a size 8. I'm going to go ahead and debarb the hook. For thread, I'm using a Danville 6 aught in a fluorescent chartreuse. I'm going to attach my thread first off right behind. The eye of the hook, and I'm just going to make a little bump of thread right here. Now I'm going to move my thread back a little bit, leaving just a little gap, and make another little bump of thread. This is going to help facilitate in tying in the mono eyes. Now you don't have to do this if you're comfortable with tying in dumbbell eyes of various sorts, but this does help with the mono eyes. These are a large pre-made monofilament eyes. You can make your own if you want, if you would rather, but these are pre-made. You can get these from Wopsy, various other companies. I'm gonna place these right in that little gap that I made, and I'm gonna put in three or four wraps in one direction, and then straightening the eyes out, put three or four wraps in the other direction. Now be careful, two things. We want to make certain that the eyes are even on both sides of the hook shank. So might have to, before we get too many wraps in there, pull that over, push that over just a little bit to make certain that it's even, uh, distributed evenly. Second, we're going to want to make certain that they are perpendicular to the hook shank, that they're not off at an angle. Then I'm going to put a few more wraps in both directions across that just to help anchor that in. Be careful that you don't put too many wraps in because you can actually wrap too much and push the eyes down. We want to keep those nice and uh, on the perpendicular side of the hook. And then I'm going to put a few finishing wraps underneath the dumbbell eyes and over the hook shank just to help support those. At this point, I'm going to be tying in my tail. I'm going to go ahead and run a base of thread down the hook shank and back up. In just a second for our tail. For the tail on this, I'm using some flash accent. This isn't a fluorescent chartreuse. I like to have a little bit more in mind um, just to add a little bit more to the fly, and I like mine just a little bit longer. When Chris Helms was tying this fly, he tended to tie it such that the tail usually was only 
about the gap of the hook past the bend of the hook. I'm going to put a few wraps going forward and come back down again and then I'm going to fold over all of those that flash accent wrapping down a little bit more and this time even going down the bend of the hook just a little bit before I come back up to the end of the shank. This is where I'm going to trim all those. If you're going to trim them the gap of the hook you can trim them right about there. I like them just a little bit longer. Adds just a little bit more life to the fly. We're now going to tie in the back of the fly. I should say what is going to end up being the back. And this is a closed cell foam that we're using. This is a two millimeter craft foam that we're using for this. I've cut this into a strip that is about as wide as the gap of the hook. That's your more or less your, your measuring right there. I'm going to place this up on top of the hook shank so that the end of the foam is just behind the monofilament eyes and I'm going to start wrapping this in. Be careful, this 6 aught thread can actually cut through this foam. So what I like to do is actually get some loose wraps heading up the hook shank real quick to kind of start pinching that foam down along the hook shank and then work my way back down and I'll actually even go down just a hair over the bend of the hook and then I'll wrap back forward again. What this will do is slowly compress all of that closed cell foam down to the hook shank and it will bind it in really really nice and tight. You might end up with a few loose thread wraps showing but that's fine all of that's going to get covered up with dubbing anyway. But this is how you get that closed cell foam anchored down to the hook shank without cutting through it. We're going to start dubbing the body on our Predator. The body is made of a number of different materials. I'm going to use some um, Prism SLF in a fluorescent chartreuse. You could even use a like a fluorescent chartreuse ice dub, laser dub if you want. Um, maybe even some Antron. It just depends on, on what you're wanting to, to tie with. But I like this because it just has a whole lot of flash to it. And very, very buggy looking. And I'm going to put just a level body on here. I don't have to have this tapered. If I want to, I can. But I really don't need to have a taper to it. I'm just going to go ahead and put a level body on. Get you about two or three inches on there and just slowly apply that to the body on top of that foam just kind of covering up the foam is all we're looking for and then put a little bit more on and just work your way up to behind the monofilament eyes. This gives you a little bit better control in terms of keeping that body a consistent diameter I really wouldn't worry if you end up with a little bit of a gap here and there. It's all a nice chartreuse color underneath. I'm certain panfish are going to tear up some of these fibers and pull them out anyway. Then we're just going to go ahead and cover all of that up. I like to go ahead and just put a little bit of dubbing right behind the mono eyes. Right like that. Now we're going to fold over our foam and we want this to just fold straight over the back here. We're going to get in a couple two three wraps and cinch in that foam right behind the mono eyes and then go ahead and put in another four or five wraps. Each successive wrap will tie that in a little bit tighter and a little bit tighter. Trim this off. I don't need quite all that out there. There we go. I'm going to bring our thread underneath up to behind the eye of the hook. Put down a little base layer of thread covering up the hook shank if needed. And then we're going to wrap in the foam right behind the eye of the hook as well. A couple of wraps will cinch that down. 
put a few more wraps in to hold that nice and secure. Now we're ready to tie in our rubber legs. I'm using a fluorescent orange round rubber leg in a meat size medium for this. And I'm going to peel off two legs, one for each side. Like a lot of these kind of hopper or terrestrial patterns, I like to have shorter legs up front and longer legs in the back. So I'm going to tie this in such that I have about a third of the legs sticking out the front. Careful when you tie this in because we're not looking to crank down on this. We just want to get this secured right on the side of that foam. See how that's just right on the side of the foam? We don't want it underneath or on top. We want it right there. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to pass my thread underneath to the other segment back here. And I'm going to put a couple of wraps in, getting the foam, or excuse me, the rubber legs right down on the side of the foam there. I'll come over to the other side. I'll set my legs up here. We're going to trim these also a little bit later, the rubber legs, to make certain the length matches on both of them. We get a couple of wraps right in here. Then underneath, I can come around to the front again, and I can lay that leg down, and I can wrap right over it, just keeping that, those rubber legs right on the side of the foam, right there. There we go. So that's how it should look. Now we're going to go back to our dubbing. We're going to take our fluorescent chartreuse prism SLF, and we're going to dub probably a, a fairly sparse, long dubbing noodle. Basically what we're doing is we're going to wrap back and forth, covering up any thread wraps that are exposed and building up just a little bit of a head area. So I'll put a wrap in here to help cover those up, and then I'll put some crisscross wraps in here. Just like this. And that's going to cover up any exposed thread. I have a little bit more. A little bit more right in here. There we go. And we're going to end up right at the back. And see all of my thread wraps up under the body are all covered, so it looks like that body just comes right straight on up to the eye of the hook. Now I'm going to foam, fold the foam back. When I do, I'm going to pull on that a little bit to make certain that the eye of the hook is exposed. I take my thread, and I put a few wraps around to start to cinch that down. I'll probably put in about a half a dozen wraps to cinch that down and hold that together. I'll put in a four or five turn hand whip finish right where I tied in the wing back here, and then I'm done with the thread. Now for the wing back here, we want to have what represents kind of a wing case or the wings on this bug. What I'm going to do is um, on some of the patterns, we've been clipping them at an angle like this so that you've got a little point sticking out. This is the exact opposite. So I'm going to start the wing about halfway down the back and just clip a little V. Sorry if my hands are in your way. Go ahead and flip that over, get in here. And see, we just end up with a little V in the back. Before I put a head cement on this, I'm gonna bring the legs together in front and I just wanna even those up just a little bit so I'm just going to trim a little bit off of those, 
just so they're evened up. They stick out a lot, so you know they don't have to be real short. Off the back, I'm going to do the same thing. I like to have these probably about a half a shank length or so off the bend of the hook. Mostly, I just want to bring them together so that if they're uneven, I can just go ahead and give them a little snip and I'll just even those right up. So I like to go ahead and put a little head cement on the thread wraps. You don't have to, but again, I like to simply because they, the fish, little teeth on the fish will tear those up. So this just helps it last just a little bit longer. But that is the, I guess for lack of a better word, the panfish predator. A Chris Helms variation on the Skip Morris original predator fly. The color variations, you could do an orange, you could do even uh, some multiple colors. So like maybe a, um, a darker dubbing in the body and an orange on the back, um, maybe even a black ice dub or something with a yellow foam on the back, something like that. Blue is also a very, very good color for panfish. So you might be able to incorporate some blue in there and have you a nice looking little bug. These are a wonderful top water fly for uh, any any uh, panfish. I've caught small mouth and large mouth on these as well. Uh, it's just a, a good all round fly to have when you're out doing any warm water fishing. So that is Chris Helms Predator. Thanks for joining me at the Vice today. I hope you learned at least a new pattern, if not a new technique, maybe a tip or trick here and there. If you have any questions about this fly or any of the techniques used in constructing this pattern, please leave them in the comments section down below. If you go to the trouble to ask a question, I'll go to the trouble to answer it. If you'd like to help Dressed Irons, please share this video with your friends and anybody you think that might enjoy this pattern. Until next time, Remember, it's fly tying. If you're not having fun, then you're doing it wrong.